Hey guys, this is Shubhash Eshmishra, your test coach. Today we will discuss 30 SQL interview questions which are frequently asked in software testing interviews. First we will discuss 15 theoretical questions which will help you to understand basics of SQL if you don't know anything about it. Then we will discuss 15 SQL queries which are very important for your interviews. Please practice it well before your interview. Don't worry at all if you are very new to SQL. Just go through the complete video and let me know in the comment section if it is helpful for you or you need anything more. I will definitely help you in that. So let's jump to our first question. What is SQL? This is very first question usually interviewer starts with. Just to check if you have knowledge on SQL or not. So SQL stands for Structured Query Language. It is a standard language for accessing and manipulating databases. Using SQL, you can create databases, tables, stored procedures. You can execute queries, retrieve, insert, update, delete data against your database. So this should be pretty much to answer what is SQL. Remember SQL stands for Structured Query Language. It is a standard language for accessing and manipulating databases. Let's move to the next question. So what are the different types of SQL commands and can you explain those commands? So again this is a very basic question. People want you to understand the basic commands and what are the different commands available in SQL. So there are four different types of SQL commands. You can see these are the different categories we have DDL, DML, DCL and TCL. So DDL is known as data definition language and DDL statements are used to define the database structure or schema. So example you can see create, alter, drop, truncate, comment and rename. So create is used to create objects in the database. Alter is used to alter the structure of the database. Then drop is like deleting objects from the database. Truncate you can use to remove all records from a table. Then you have comment. Comment is used to add comment to the data dictionary. Then we have rename. Rename is kind of renaming the object. So here you are seeing right we are telling DDL is known as data definition language. So I will give you an easy trick to remember what are the commands for DDL because people expect what are the DDL commands like that right. So when you are telling DDL means data definition language and you are defining something right. So what define means maybe you are creating something maybe you are altering something maybe you are dropping something right. So Always remember when you are talking about data definition language, think about definition is for defining. So I am defining something. I am defining a, I am creating a object in the database. I am altering the structure of the database. I am dropping the table. So something like that. So when you will think about data definition language, think about defining commands like create, alter, drop, truncate comment and rename then we'll move to the dml so dml is known as data manipulation language and these statements are used for managing data within schema objects and the examples here you can see select insert update delete and merge so when i'm telling data manipulation what it means you are manipulating the data in the database so when we are talking insert, so insert means you are inserting a new record to the table. Update means you are updating some existing data, which means you are manipulating, right? So again, it will be easy to remember if you will think in this way. DML is known as data manipulation language. Manipulate means maybe insert, update, delete. So you can think about that and you can remember this uh, ways like data manipulation language is for the commands we use are select, insert, update, delete, merge and all. Again select is used to retrieve data from a database. Insert is used to insert data into a table. Update is used to update existing data within a table. Delete is used to 
delete all records from a table fine then we will move to the next one DCL so DCL is known as data control language and the examples are grant and revoke so here we are controlling something right so we are telling grant and revoke so grant is like give users access privilege to the database revoke is opposite withdraw access privilege given with the grant command so whatever we have given the access through a grant command revoke will withdraw that uh, privilege access privilege fine so here we are trying to control something that's why we are telling dcl is data control language and the commands are like grant and revoke we are controlling the access right so think about that remember in that way when we are telling data control language it means we are controlling something with the commands grant and revoke then we have tcl tcl is known as transaction control language and these statements are used to manage the changes made by dml statements it allows statements to be grouped together into logical transactions so whatever transactions happening we want to maybe commit it we want to roll back it we want to set point it so what commit means so whatever work you have done for example you did something in the dml command dml command is data manipulation language for example update you updated a record in some table then you have to perform a commit so what will happen it will be saved permanently your work will be saved permanently if we will roll back then it will be like it will restore the database to the original whatever happened till last commit right so rollback is used for that so here you can think if how can i control a transaction to control a transaction i need a commit or rollback so the commands here we used are commit and rollback so these are the few easy tricks to remember uh, like uh, what is ddl command what is dml command what is dcl command what is tcl command because maybe sometime interviewer also ask like what are the difference between ddl and dml or dcl and tcl so you can answer all those questions if you will understand these basic things right fine we'll move to the next one what is an index in sql so index are used to retrieve data from the database more quickly so the user cannot see the indexes an index creates an entry for each value it is used to speed up the performance of queries let me give an example which will help you to understand and remember index easily for example you want to refer all pages in a book that discuss some certain topics then what you will do what will be your first thing you will refer to the index right whatever present in the first thing you will go and refer to the index which which will list all the topics maybe alphabetically then you can refer to one or more specific page numbers by looking at that index you can go to the different different uh, page whatever you are looking for so same concept is used in sql for index and that's why it it Im improves the performance of queries so here is a syntax you can see to create a index and a drop a index so an index helps to speed up select queries and where clauses but it slows down data input with the update and insert statements so indexes can be created or dropped with no effect on the data fine we'll move to the next question what is a view in sql a view is a virtual table which consists of a subset of data contained in a table it contains rows and columns just like a real table a view can contain all rows of a table or select rows from a table it can contain all the rows or selective rows so a view can be created from one or many tables it depends on the written sql query to create a view and there are certain advantages view occupy no space 
and uh, views are used to simply retrieve the results of complicated queries that need to be executed often. Views are used to restrict access to the database or to hide data complexity. We will move to the next question. What is normalization? Normalization is a database design technique that reduces data redundancy and eliminates undesirable characteristics like insertion, update and deletion anomalies. Normalization rules divides larger tables into smaller tables and links them using relationships. The purpose of normalization in SQL is to eliminate redundant or repetitive data and ensure that data is sorted logically. The database normalization process is divided into these normal forms you can see, first normal form 1NF, second normal form 2NF like that, we have till 6NF, okay. We will move to the next one. What is a primary key in SQL? Again, this is a very important question. People want you to understand what is primary key and all. So, let us see. A primary key is a field in a table which uniquely identifies each row or record in a database table. Primary keys must contain unique values. A primary key column cannot have null values. A table can have only one primary key which may consist of single or multiple fields. When multiple fields are used as a primary key, they are called as composite key. If a table has primary key defined on any fields, then you cannot have two records having the same value of that field. So here you can see the syntax which we have defined. So the employee ID here you can see employee ID and it is a not null and this is defined as a primary key, right? So when you are creating a table, you can define which one is the primary key. Here employee ID is the primary key because you know employee ID is always unique in a employee table, right? So that will uniquely identifies the employees. So let's move to the next question. What is foreign key in SQL? So again, the previous question, primary key and this foreign key, these are interlinked. When people will ask you about primary key, definitely you can expect this question also. A foreign key is a key used to link two tables together. This is sometimes also called as a referencing key. A foreign key in one table used to point primary key in another table. The relationship between two tables matches the primary key in one of the tables with a foreign key in the second table. If a table has a primary key defined on any fields, then you cannot have two records having the same value of that field. Here you can see this is the employee table and this is the company table, right? Here the primary key is employee ID, right? And in this, what we are seeing? Primary key company ID. In this table, primary key is company ID. In this table, primary key is employee ID. But which one is the foreign key here? So here we are defining, you can see employee ID references employee employee id emp id so this is the table name here we can see the table name here and the emp id whatever the column name here right emp id same is the reference here so you we have two tables in the employee table we have details like employee id name age address salary and all and in a company table we have company id company name company domain company address and employee id so it is like if you have to join these two tables, you need this EMP ID, okay? Because these are the reference, and the unique things in this table is EMP ID, and the unique things in this table is company ID because these are the primary key. But foreign key is here, right? Employee underscore ID. 
so that's that's why we told right a foreign key in one table used to point primary key in another table so this is the uh, foreign key in this right so this foreign key is the primary key in this employee table we'll move to the next question what is a query a database query is a request for data or information from a database table or combination of tables a database query can be either a select query or any action query so whatever we use to write right select star from uh, employee or select star from any table right so that is a query so that that's simple we'll move to the next one what is a sub query a sub query is a query within another query the outer query is called as main query and the inner query is called sub query so sub query is always executed first and the results of sub query is passed on to the main query so this one we will see practically when we are uh, we will write some commands so in that time you will able to understand how we are writing sub query and how it is useful but uh, yeah for if someone is ask you you can just answer sub query is a query within another query and outer query is called as main query and inner query is called as sub query but for your understanding just wait for the uh, wait for the last till end where we'll write some queries there you will able to understand what is sub query then we'll move to the next question what is stored procedure a stored procedure is a collection of sql statements that have been created and stored in the database to perform a particular task the stored procedure accepts input parameters and processes them and returns a single value such as a number or text value or a result set we'll move to the next question what is trigger a db trigger is a code or programs that automatically execute with response to some event on a table or view in a database mainly trigger helps to maintain the integrity of the database so we'll move to the next one explain distinct in sql with example so definitely you will get a question around distinct if it will be a in depth interview on sql right people ask about this distinct keyword so the distinct keyword is used with select keyword it is helpful when there is a need of avoiding duplicate values present in any specific columns in a table when we use distinct keyword only the unique values are fetched so here you can see the syntax and in this example the query will select the distinct employees from table named employee here you can see the distinct keyword and this is the column name and this is the table name so here we will get the unique employee details or unique employee numbers from the employee table we'll move to the next question what are the sql constants so constant are the rules that we can apply on the type of data in a table we can specify the limit on the type of data that can be stored in a particular column in a table using constant there are a few constant here you can see like not null unique primary key foreign key check default so i can explain you in detail about uh, these things so for example not null so this constant tells that we cannot store a null value in a column so if a column is specified as not null then we will not able to store null in this particular column so for example in a employee table you are putting employee id as not null you cannot uh, insert data with a null value so you have to give some data here then we have unique so this this constant when specified with a column tells that all the values in the column must be unique so what it means the values in any row of a column must not be repeated for example again 
employee id employee id always should be unique it should not be like one employee having the id and the same id is assigned to some other employee also so it will create some problem right for example mobile number mobile number is always unique you cannot give the same mobile number to two different people right so that is a unique one then we have primary key primary key we understood in our uh, previous question right so a primary key is a field which can uniquely identify each row in a table and this constant is used to specify a field in a table as primary key if we we'll define something as a primary key that will be a primary key for a table and again it is uniquely identified so employee id is again a good example for primary key then we have foreign key foreign key also we saw in our previous example foreign key is a field which can uniquely identify each row in another table and this constant is used to specify a field as foreign key if you are defining something as a foreign key it will be a foreign key right then we have check so check constant helps to validate the values of a column to meet a particular condition so it helps to ensure that the value stored in a column meets a specific condition if you have some condition it will it should meet that specific condition that's why check is used then we have default so default constant specifies a default value for the column when no value is specified by the user if you are putting default maybe you forgot to give some value it should take the default value when you are no, not giving any value that default value whatever you have given that should be considered so that's why default is used so that's all about the constants so if anyone is asking specifically talk something about not null constant or what is not null constant like that maybe you will able to answer that we'll move to the next question so what is the difference between delete truncate and drop command so this is very very important uh, so most of the interviewer ask this question is like whether you understand what is delete truncate and uh, drop what is the difference between them so you can you can start with like delete is a dml command and delete command is used to remove rows from a table so a where clause can be used to only remove some rows so you can use where clause in the delete command because you want to remove some specific rows right so where clause can be used in the delete command if no where condition is specified all rows will be removed after performing a delete operation you need to commit or roll back the transaction to make the change permanent or to undo it means roll back is possible in the delete command then we have truncate truncate removes all rows from a table it is a ddl command and roll back option is not available there and truncate is somewhere faster than delete okay then we have drop so drop command removes a table from the database it will remove completely a table so all the tables rows indexes and privileges all will be removed right so it is a ddl command and everything will get removed with this so that's the basic difference between delete truncate and drop remember and understand it very well because this is asked very frequently in your interviews let's move to the next one what is a join and what are the different types of joins so a sql join statement is used to combine data or rows from two or more tables based on a common field between them so we have different types of join like inner join left join right join full join so here you can see what is inner join what is left join what is right join what is full outer join so inner join returns records that have matching values in both the tables so it will give only the common data here whereas in left outer join it will return all records from the 
left table and the matched record from the right table it will give all the details from this and whatever the common things here similarly right outer join it will return all records from the right table and the matched records from the left table all the data from here and match data from the left table whereas in the full join it will return all records when there is a match in either left or right table so we'll see this again when we'll start writing the query after this we will have the questions for the sql queries so there we'll write some queries for the joins so you will able to understand how we are writing for inner join left join writer right join full outer join everything so do not miss the next part that is very very important we'll write all the sql queries there so in your interview people ask the sql queries to write so in that part we'll see how we need to write the sql queries okay thank you if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section i'll try to explain it please like share and subscribe to my channel